So I'm uh, Stephen Heasley, also known as Dixie. I was born and bred in the Avenue Road Estate in Lurgan. Uh, my my mum and dad, um, sister Donna, my older brothers Gary and Paul, and my twin brother Andrew. I'm a very competitive person, so I kept comparing myself to my twin brother Andrew. Um, he was a charmer. He had the looks. He had the. He, he had probably everything that I wanted. And I felt there was a lot missing in me. I felt not good enough. I felt inferior. But I had a really good relationship with my dad. Uh, me and my dad were like joined at the hips where you would have seen Big Dixie. You would have seen Wee Dixie. And um, my dad loved music. He loved football. He loved alcohol. And probably all the, the things that were, were fun and, and good about my dad, I wanted to carry them out in me. I started off at a young age with the rest of my brothers and my sisters going to meetings every night of the week. That was good. I learned a lot of stuff. But I never made a commitment that I felt at that time, no, it's not for me. The whole Jesus lifestyle, it's not for me. I'll do it when I'm later. I ended up um, getting involved in music. Um, playing the guitar from a very young age, uh, kicking football around the streets of the Avenue Road uh, from, with my brothers, but then the, the drink followed. I remember uh, one time in, in P7, the teacher said to me that I was never going to pass this certain maths test, so what's the point? Just come on up, sit at my desk and we'll pick the football team. And part of me thought that was cool. Part of me thought that, yeah, I'm getting made to be the, the, the captain of the football team, the, 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 cool, the cool guy in the class because I didn't have to do the test. But really, a part of me also felt that I wasn't good enough, that I was never going to probably achieve anything substantial. And uh, I'm going to look back now, um, probably feel a wee bit let down. Um, that carried on through junior high school. Still playing football, still loving life, still having good friends. But I also knew that there was something in me that was really missing. Back in the day, Scooter was a, a cool thing to be at. And we went to the Scooter concert, great night. I remember having a bottle of vodka and my friend Alan had a bottle of Coke. He always was different. He always was different to, to some of my other friends. He stood out, he made decisions and they always seemed to be the right decisions. Um, and part of me always thought one day I would like to be like him. I also knew that Alan was different because he was a Christian. He loved Jesus. He was firm in what he believed in. He was sure of what he believed in. He was sure of who he was. And part of me, because I was so lost, because I, I felt inadequate, not good enough, I looked up to people like Alan but thought that I could never be that person. After the concert was the first time I experienced a nightclub. We went to the coach uh, in Bambridge and I loved it. It opened my eyes. It opened my eyes to something different. It opened a whole new can of worms for me. But I, I left school and as soon as I left school I went into a PVC window company and I started earning money with my brother Paul. And, and that was good. I loved, I loved working, I loved getting my hands dirty, I loved, I loved the whole work environment. But I was going out every night of the week to make me feel good about myself. The more I worked, the more money I made. I wasn't able to earn enough for the lifestyle that I wanted to live. It wasn't enough. One day, walking up the town, a woman is uh, showing me how easy it was to get a credit card. I filled in the form. A few days later, I had this credit card in my hand which allowed me to get thousands of pounds in debt, which allowed me to, to feed my habit of going out every night of the week. On the outside, that looked great. No one knew the, the, the problem that that would, would have at me. But on the inside, I, I was still broken. I was still feeling not good enough. I was still insecure. I didn't know what to turn to. I didn't know where to go for help. I remember coming through the end of the house about half six, seven o'clock the next morning. And a wee bit all over the place, I tried to sober myself up. 
um, because mum and dad were eating their breakfast <laughs> and uh, I went to go up the stairs into bed and I near got to the top of the stairs and I slipped down the stairs and I remember my mum saying to my dad at that time that she was real worried about me but also that she was a wee bit disappointed in me um, which really struck a chord with me like I knew all the things that I was doing was wrong uh, but whenever I actually heard my mum uh, say that to my dad um, something, something hit home so the next day I went to church with Alan uh, who had invited me and we went and it started off with the worship, the music and there was something different, there was something different in the atmosphere that, that made me say this is, this is different, this is okay. Next thing you know the, the pastor's sharing this gospel message, he's sharing about Jesus, he's sharing about the importance of having Jesus in your life. He said a, a simple point. He says that everyone in this place tonight will make a decision. He says you'll either choose to follow Jesus or you'll choose to turn your back on him again. And whether you realize it or not, you're going to make that decision. On that night, a 21 year old sitting in a chicken farm in Donnacloney, I broke down and I cried my eyes out. And, uh, at the end of it, I, I gave my life to Jesus. I remember whenever I to told my dad that Dad, I became a Christian. He grabbed me and he gave me the biggest hug and he says, I'm proud of you, son. I'm proud of you, son. 24 hours earlier, they were worried about me and they were disappointed in me. Something just triggered me thinking that this is okay. I've got this. You know, I'm loved, I'm actually accepted. I knew I had to turn my back on certain things that were going on in my life. Um, so I did that, I stuck at it, it was difficult. There were some hard times. Um, there was some slips, there was some falls. Um, but I always kept looking forward. Next big thing for me was I, I met my wife, I met Heidi. She showed me what it was to, to love Jesus. Um, not even just on a Sunday, but how to, to live like Jesus every day. She showed me by her actions of what it was to be a true follower of Jesus. Nine months later, we got engaged. Uh, a year later, we got married. Uh, and now I have three beautiful daughters, uh, Leah, Olivia and Poppy, uh, who bring us both much joy who bring us uh, both much happiness and we love them to bits. Something within me always loved telling people about Jesus. Even in, in my football as well, I, I loved telling my teammates about Jesus. But then an opportunity came about um, for a youth position within Lynx. I didn't know whether to go for it or not because again, I'd, next to nothing uh, in qualifications I said okay I have a bit of a passion here so I, I will uh, go for this. A week later um, I got the, the, the final word through that I was going to start change my whole life completely and start uh, being a youth worker. Part of my work is working with young people uh, daily but also going up onto the streets. I want to go up to the streets and be like Jesus, tell them about Jesus, and give them an alternative, give them hope, give them life. You know, we can tell them all about the drink, we can tell them all about the drugs, we can tell them all about the sex, but I love telling young people about Jesus. There's a lot of brokenness on our streets. Um, we have some great stories, stories of people coming to Jesus, in the middle of the street. I love being in situations or environments that's a wee bit uncomfortable for some people, but I'm okay with that because I know that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I fully believe and, and I know that Jesus uh, has healed me. Uh, I no longer feel inadequate. I no longer feel not good enough. I feel a sense of purpose 
don't compare myself to other people. Um, he's took away the, all the desires that I once had. And now I just love just looking at things the way hopefully Jesus would look at them. I hear people on the streets, hopefully the way Jesus would hear them. And uh, for me, I just want to tell people that Jesus can give you hope, that Jesus can give you life, that Jesus can be that alternative to brokenness, that he'll make you whole. I want to give God all the glory um, for the change in my life, from being inadequate, from not feeling good enough, from having no self-belief or no self-worth, to having these cravings, to borderline addictions. Uh, God has taken them away, and I give God the glory for that. God has changed my story. He's rewrote my story. I see it every day in our street that God is changing people's lives. He's rewriting their story, and he can change your story too.